uh, drive safely because we have a, a guy over there. <laughs> Numer 16. Witamy Państwa bardzo serdecznie. Numer 16, Kia po Bydgoszczy, tym razem w Kii Sorento. Bardzo duże auto, bardzo dobrze wyposażone. System nagłośnienia BOS, wentylowane, podgrzewane. Fotele, 7 miejsc y, dla pasażera. To wszystko możecie sobie zobaczyć, a nawet i przejechać się tym autem. Kia Makarewicz Fordońska 353. O ile dobrze mówię, jeśli nie, to Przemek to sobie wytnie. No. E, moim Państwa gościem dzisiaj Wes Washburn. Hello Wes. Hey. Uh, West Washburn, 28 years old, averaging this season 11 points, 4.1 assists, 2 rebounds and 40% for free uh, in the Energa Basket League right now. Wes, just uh, you played some games in this league. How do you feel in this league so uh, far? It's been good so far. Uh, it's a very competitive league, a lot of good teams, a lot of... Euro Cup, Champions League team, stuff like that. So uh, the level's high and I enjoy playing here. Lovely, lovely. We're going to switch to your previous career because you played 77 games in G League. Uh, so tell us why it didn't work for you because two seasons spent there, 77 games, and then there's 11 games in the NBA Summer League. So uh, did any team approach you like really from the NBA that you wanted to play? Um. Well, I did the summer league fresh out of college. Okay, yeah. And then uh, I came over to Germany. Mm -hmm. That was uh, 16, my, 17? Season? Yes, yes. For my first uh, professional year. Uh, ended up getting hurt. So I had to go back and then I joined the G League. So I was there for about half a season. I got there in late December. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was there for about half a season and played well. Got invited to the team I played for, Summer League. Uh, after that, um, there was a change in the G League teams. They created some more teams. So I was in Iowa okay. playing for the Energy, who was... Iowa is a Timberwolves second team, uh, right? Yeah, it know. was. It was the Memphis Grizzlies when Memphis, I was first okay. there. And then I played with Memphis in the Summer League that mm -hmm. summer. Then Memphis created their own team, the Memphis okay. Hustle, mm -hmm. down there. But Iowa still had my rights, so Memphis tried to trade for me because okay. they were interested in me as a player. But with me being from Iowa and everything like that, the Timberwolves organization didn't want to let me go. So I ended up playing the second G League season for okay. the Timberwolves. And they were obviously not as interested in me as a prospect mm -hmm. as Memphis was. Okay, so coming to the G League is like it was a one step before the NBA together? Did you think that you can make it to the NBA? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I did believe I could make it to the NBA. Uh, but obviously it didn't work out. But uh, I made a bunch of friends and valuable experience and learned a lot from not only players but coaches and guys who played in the league that are NBA veterans that were on the G League teams at the time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the experience was valuable. Lovely. Uh, you said that you met a lot of friends. Uh, some of them they're playing in the, in the Polish Basketball League right now. Uh, that's James Bell and Kobe Simmons. Kobe Simmons is playing for Stal Ostrów and James Bell is playing for Anvil. And probably you met some guys that are in the NBA right now. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, stay in touch with these guys? It's like it's really close to the to the best league, to the to the best players. It's like you're staying here in Budgo. Do you do you know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. it's only Polish league, mm -hmm. but you're really, are you really close to to that guys from 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 NBA? Uh, I talked to a few of them that uh, got to that level and now are overseas, or that were some of them that are still in the NBA today, but. Um, I wouldn't say I'm extremely close to him, but mm -hmm. if we see each other, we always get a chance to catch up. I got a chance to catch up with Kobe. You just know the, him, right? Yeah, yeah. I got a chance to catch up with Kobe uh, after the game here and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it's always good to see guys like that. Uh, okay. You visit a lot of countries, uh, like after the, the Summer League and the G League uh, adventure. It was Germany, uh, Great Britain, Mexico, Latvia, Finland, Greece, and right now Poland. Uh, which country was the best to live in? Uh, just for living? In or like overall? Are in we combining overall. both of them? Yeah, you can say for living first and then as a sport wise. Okay, for living, I would have to say London. London was amazing. Oh, no. I, I enjoyed living in London. 
uh, obviously everybody spoke English as well, so that's <laughs> that's a plus. But uh, yeah, living in London was awesome. Uh, great guys on the team really welcomed me in, and that was a lot of fun. As far as combined with basketball, mm -hmm. I would have to say Germany. Germany with the living situation mixed with the level of play there and the top league in the BBL and mm -hmm. Germany was was a great experience as well. Uh, Rod said to me on the on the previous episode that uh, he played in Hamburg. As I, mm -hmm. as I recall, and he said that Hamburg was very um, Americanized mm -hmm. city. So how it comes to, to, to your city? Where you so were? I was in Ludzburg, which mm -hmm. is a little bit smaller, but Stuttgart was right next to it, which is a bigger oh, okay. city. And that was also very Americanized. Uh, it was it was a good time. It okay. was a good time. Um, let's talk about the story about coming to Poland, because you were a free agent after uh, your journey in Latvia. Right? Uh, no, it was actually uh, I played in Finland and Greece last season. Finland and Greece. Okay, so, we're gonna cut that out because I'm <laughs> as a journalist. So. <laughs> <laughs> Say something about the story about coming to Poland because you played in uh, in Greece and Finland, Finnish league, right? Mm -hmm. um, did you know anything about this country before you you came here? I uh, knew a little bit about the country. Uh, we played against Zelina Gora uh, when I was in Germany in the Champions League. So mm -hmm. I knew a little bit about it, knew the league was, knew some guys that were in the league when I looked up, uh, obviously a few of the teams that were in the league as well. Um, but yeah, I hadn't, hadn't played here besides just that one game. So mm -hmm. I was excited for the opportunity. I asked Rod about it. Because first of all, when let's say an uh, agent is contacting you and do you know what, Wes, I've got a really good offer from Poland, uh, there's that team, Astoria, blah, 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 and you're like, what, what the f is this? And then you're looking up information about that team, like, you know, on Google or I know Instagram, you're checking up that, uh, that kind of information yeah, on social media? Yeah, you look it up on, you look up the city, obviously, mm -hmm. on, you Google the city and the team and then you can Eurobasket how the guys have been doing mm -hmm. and the stats and stuff like that and then um, from there you can get on YouTube and kind of try to find a few of the games or a few of the clips to get a feel for the style of play and stuff like that but yeah the agent does a lot of the work but mm -hmm. as a player you always have to invest in it as well. Yeah uh, I didn't ask Rod about it but uh, is it always like that that the coach is calling to you or is it only left to the agent? Like the the team is approaching the agent, right? Um, yes. We we want you, mm -hmm. but then let's say we we have a um, early settlement that we want you. Mm -hmm. Is it um, the next step? Is it that that the coach is calling you, like to to know you how how is your play style and everything? Yeah, yeah. So coaches obviously do a little research on the players as well. Yeah. They'll look at synergy and stuff like that, but. They'll they'll call you to get a feel for your personality and how you are as a person. Willingness to do some yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. So things like that, and uh, from there you might talk to the president as well of mm -hmm. the club and stuff like that, and try to iron out all the details of the contract, and then try to get a deal done. Okay. Uh, you played with Klaus Travers yes. in, in Latvia. Did you contact him before you you get here? Yeah, yeah. I talked to Klaus a little bit. Um, trying to get a feel for how things mm -hmm. were here but uh he said it was all good things so and he said they were excited to have me so lovely how do you like to play with him because you are a point guard he's a center so mm -hmm. most of the pick and rolls you're playing with him yeah yeah i love playing with klaus uh it was one of the big factors in me coming here knowing how how talented he was at the five position lovely lovely uh you spent some time playing uh overseas so can you tell us how difficult it is to, you know, leave your family, friends and, and everyone and came to a foreign country without knowing the language, without knowing the culture, currency and, and, and all the stuff? Yeah, it's definitely difficult uh, leaving family and friends and your loved ones to exactly to come over here by yourself and spend most of the time by yourself, mm -hmm. except for with obviously you might have a few other foreign guys and you guys make that bond like that. But uh it's it's a tough thing, man. It's a tough thing. Uh, what do you do to to kill the free time? I mean, we say it in Poland to to kill the free time. Mm -hmm. What do you do in in your free time? Uh, I like to cook. Uh, I like to. I play video games a little bit, and that way I can 
What video games? NBA, 2K? I play a little bit of 2K, a little bit of Call of Duty, things like this. And that allows me to play online and communicate mm -hmm. with my friends okay. back home as well. So that's always a good thing to stay in contact with your people back home. Uh, being in Poland, what do you miss the most from America that you don't have here in, in Poland? Definitely my friends and family, I would say, is the, the number one thing I miss the most about America. Anything about that? Like some... You like to cook, maybe some... Uh, how do you call it? Spices? Spices, like, oh yeah, like, some you know, seasonings and stuff. Seasoning, I tend, exactly. I tend to seasoning. bring my seasonings over here when I come, so... Okay. I have I have a pretty extensive spice drawer. <laughs> uh, what's your go-to dish? Uh, I make a little bit of everything, to be honest. Like okay, uh, let's say your girlfriend's coming, and you want to. We're gonna turn left here. Here, okay. here, 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 here. Yeah, we're gonna take a U-turn. Okay. Uh, your girlfriend's coming here. Mm -hmm. You want to impress her. What you're gonna cook for her? Oh man. Uh, I gotta that pick she's one gonna dish. be like you know delighted and and everything. Uh, my girlfriend's favorite dish of mine is my enchiladas that I make. That's that is her favorite dish that I make. So I would have to say that if I was going to make her happy. For a family. For my family. Yeah. Is it any different dish? Uh yeah, my mom enjoys my uh my Tuscan salmon I make. And like a white cream sauce, she enjoys that one. Okay, and I need to try that. I, I spoke with Rod that he needs to bring his, he calls it uh, Rod <laughs> special, like some with white rice and some, some cream on it. I saw that. The Rod said the Rod special. That had me cracking up. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Was good? I haven't, I haven't uh, tried it yet. Tried I haven't it. tried it. He, he only cooks for his girl, man. Uh, he, okay. he hasn't cooked for us yet, unfortunately. Cheeky. Okay, uh, moving on to the to the next question. Uh, being close to to NBA and making it to the NBA could be I don't know if I'm gonna say it right. Downfalling, mm -hmm. like you can feel a little bit down that you didn't make it. Did you lose any desire to play basketball after that two two seasons that you didn't been been called up by uh, the no. NBA team? No, I didn't really get too discouraged about it. I knew that. I was a very high level player and I was very close to that level. Um, they gave me, the coaches did a really good job of giving me a few things that I really needed to improve on if I wanted to mm -hmm. make the jump to the NBA. And uh, I've worked very hard at doing all of those things. So, you know, you can never write yourself off. And I do love the game of basketball. So getting a chance to play professionally anywhere is amazing. Yeah. So you're, do you want to play until you're 35? Or forty. Uh, I would like to. We'll see how my <laughs> we'll see how my body holds up, though. <laughs> uh, you mentioned your body because you play in ankle sport, right? Yes. Do you tape your ankles? No. With hooky? No. So you only use ankle sport. Is mm -hmm. it because of any injuries you had previously? Uh, yeah. Um, I have uh, pretty bad ankles, honestly. Uh, okay. I tend to twist them. Twist them if I don't wear ankle braces and mm -hmm. stuff like this. So I went away from tape and started doing ankle braces in my college days and mm -hmm. it's just kind of carried over to the pros. Okay, okay. That was that was quick answer. Uh, what's driving a really nice car? How do you like it so far? What was the question? No, how, how do you like the car you're driving? The car? Oh, it's, it's great. It's nice and smooth. What's sure. your What's your dream car? My dream car? Oh, a part of Kia Sorento we are driving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Man, I don't know if I really have a dream car, to be okay, honest. Okay, just think about it. The next question, we're going to move on. What car do you have in the United States? I have a 2015 Camaro. Camaro? Yes. Okay, okay. Chevy Camaro. Okay, that's fancy. So, the dream car? Maybe Camaro, but the old one. Yeah, yeah, maybe the maybe the newer the newer Camaro. Ah, the newer, that. okay, okay, that way. As the, as the dream way. car. Um, I've got like six sentences Sen ah. <laughs> i've got the six sentences mm -hmm. sentences sentence sentences mm -hmm. for you to finish um we're gonna play a game i'm, I'm playing with you all the games like uh, rod had a yes and no answer and other guys had a multiple choice answers uh, i want to, f to finish the sentence 
if I wouldn't be a basketball player, I would be a coach. Basketball coach. Yes. Okay. Uh, after my career is over, I will became a. I went to school to be a marriage counselor. So I would say, Who? I would Sorry? say a marriage counselor. Marriage. Yes. Marriage. Yes. Like, like relationship counselor. Oh, okay. Yes. So, so you're going to be counseling about two people getting together. Yes. And how to live like with each other, how problem. to make babies. Yes. Blah, blah, yes. blah. Things like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, one thing I would take on a desert island is water. <laughs> That's clever. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about about the, I don't know cell phone or oh, you know phone. PlayStation or something. <laughs> Can't live without water, man. You gotta have water. <laughs> so, <laughs> obviously, uh, if I would, if I, <laughs> damn, if, if I would won the lottery, the first thing I would do is uh, give my mom enough money so where she doesn't have to work anymore. Okay. Uh, Okay, you mentioned your mama. Yes. Mm, how important is the family for you? Very, very important. Very important. Okay. Uh, do you think that your mama had a big impact on you? Like, I know that Rod is coming out from a really bad neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That's Baltimore, right? You're from Iowa? Yes. Yeah, from Iowa. I don't know. I didn't make any research. Is that a bad, bad place to live in? Uh, no, it's not too bad not of a really. place. So it's not too bad. When you're not living in a bad place, it's... Mm, it's really important. It's go again. It is really important as well that your parents need to, you know, raise you right, show you the the, the direction uh, where do you want to be. So, how big impact your your parents made on you, like your mama or uh, your father? So very very big impact. Um, obviously, they raised me to be a certain type of way, and. Uh, my dad was a college basketball player, and he raised me and put the ball in my hand at a mm -hmm. very young age, and my mom was very supportive of all my endeavors, everything that I did. So they were both very important to me, and can't thank them enough for how they raised me. Lovely. Shout out to, to Wes' mother. So yes. Shout out probably, to mama. Yeah. Is she, she's going to watch that? <laughs> she later? might. She might. I hope so. We need, we need that view on, on YouTube. We are still lacking. Okay. We're still lacking. Uh, okay. The last sentence. I want you to, to finish. Our Astoria will make the playoffs. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Uh, I've got everything. You you are very quick, as you are on the basketball court. So <laughs> I've got no further questions. Mic drop. Okay. Mic Thank drop. you very much. Zapraszamy bardzo serdecznie do jazdy próbnej. Kia Sorento, która jest bardzo fajna, naprawdę. Did you enjoy the drive, right? Oh yeah, the drive was really smooth. I like this car. Lovely. Zap zapraszamy Kia Sorento, Kia Motors y Makarewicz, Fordońska 353. Zapraszamy na jazdę próbną w najnowszym odcinku Kia Pop Goszczy. Moim Państwa gościem był Wes Washburn. Thank you very much, Wes. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Okay.